hello one and all to another episode of Deep Law. Rain, clouds and storms. Imagine if you could harness the power of them. Never fearing a drought. Relocating heavy storms to avoid flooding. What if the key to wielding this power was a mystical life force? Many people have claimed to harness that power, even from the very early days when people would visit a witch doctor to have them do a rain dance. What if I were to say that a certain scientist believed you could harness the clouds using the same energy that is released during sexual activities. Today, we are going to be following the strange story of Wilhelm Reich, his supposed discovery of Orgon, and the creation of the Cloudbuster. I remember seeing the Cloudbuster on a conspiracy iceberg before, but what really piqued my interest was a song by Kate Bush, fittingly called Cloudbustin'. It was released back in 1985, and in the song she recalls reading a biography of Wilhelm's son, who was around during all of his experiments. I wanted to learn more about the Cloudbuster, and that is what led me down this particular rabbit hole. We start in the life of Wilhelm Reich. He was an Austrian doctor of medicine and renowned psychoanalyst. He started his psychological career working alongside the famous Sigmund Freud in Vienna, and would quickly begin to follow in Sigmund's work into the theories of the libido. He conducted various tests and compiled huge amounts of data on the society around him and came to one distinct conclusion, that there was some kind of mutual cause of cancer, mental health problems and other socio-economic conditions, that cause being a lack of orgastic potency. This orgastic potency was renamed into Orgon in the 1930s by Wilhelm. Now, Orgon wasn't just some chemical or some type of radiation. Wilhelm stated that Orgon was a life force. It was omnipresent in the universe, and he even went as far as to say that what people call God was actually Orgon. Orgon was proposed to be in everything and everywhere. Gravity? Yep. Orgon does that. Emotions? Orgon controls that. The health of an individual was entirely based on Orgon, and when there was a lack of Orgon in the body, that's when people would begin to get sick. The Northern Lights were said to be caused by Orgon. In fact, Wilhelm stated that Orgon at any point could fuse together to begin to create life and structures. From the smallest microscopic units called biones by Wilhelm, to fuse in to create great organisms, clouds, or even galaxies. He claimed that he had seen Orgon in both his mice that he injected with bions, and in the night sky that he viewed with a special telescope called an Orgonoscope. The study of Orgon was named as Orgonomy by Wilhelm. Wilhelm started to receive a lot of backlash into his experiments of Orgon, This was primarily because he believed that high amounts of orgon was released during an orgasm. He made a huge push to try and destigmatize sex, however he did it in many ways that caused issues in a majority Catholic 1930s Austria. He promoted promiscuity in adolescents, citing that they would be healthier from it. He pushed the use of contraceptives, allowing people to have more sex and therefore increase the orgon in their bodies contraceptives being seen as evil in the Catholic's eyes. He also pushed for abortion and divorce to be more accepted. Much like with contraceptive, he intended that people would have more sex and perhaps with more people if abortion and divorce were permitted. Needless to say, this did not go down well in Austria. He eventually moved to New York in 1939. In New York, his work didn't stop and he sent a letter to Albert Einstein in 1940 to share his supposed discovery. They then met in Einstein's house the next year and sat for five hours discussing Orgon. Wilhelm told Einstein that he discovered a specific biologically effective energy which behaves different to all that is known about electromagnetic energy. He claimed that it could be used to fight illness and also as a weapon to fight off the fascists. A year prior to this, Einstein warned the United States of Germany's attempt to create an atomic bomb and urged the states to begin their own research of a weapon. 
This was the start of World War II, of course. Einstein stated to Wilhelm that if an object's temperature could be increased with no other heat source, then he would vouch for Wilhelm's discovery. In other words, if organ can be harnessed to increase the temperature of a mass, Einstein would believe him. This specific test was used due to the possibility of creating a bomb for the Allies, which would require a self-heating source. Wilhelm then gave Einstein a small device, which he called an organ accumulator. Its intention was to collect organ in the air and funnel the energy into a mass, thereby raising the temperature. Einstein tested the device for 10 days and did see a temperature change. However, this was not simply the case. One of Einstein's assistants notified him of a slight variation in temperature from the ceiling to the floor of the room. And with further tests, Einstein discovered that the temperature change was well within the gradient of the room. Wilhelm spent the next three years writing letters to Einstein, proposing various reasons as to why the accumulator didn't work. From needing to wrap a blanket around it, to burying it outside or hanging it from the ceiling. Einstein stopped responding after some time and stated that he no longer wanted anything to do with the experiment and asked that Wilhelm doesn't use Einstein's name for advertising purposes. Wilhelm was convinced that Einstein's change of mind was part of a conspiracy, perhaps from the communists or because rumours were being spread about Wilhelm becoming ill. Wilhelm eventually published his conversations with Einstein in 1953. It was at this point that Wilhelm bought himself a farm in Maine and called it Organon. It would appear that this was the point that Wilhelm's life began to be consumed by this life force that everyone would shun and call him insane. After Einstein's negative response to Orgon, Wilhelm started to sell products to increase the organ in a person's body and therefore promote a longer life. This would be in the form of a tall cupboard, sometimes called Faraday cages, which was lined with various organic and non-organic materials from iron to wool. A chair would be placed inside and the participant would sit naked on the chair, sometimes for hours on end. Wilhelm proposed that there would be an organ concentration that is three to five times stronger in this box than found in the natural air. He claimed that when he placed mice with cancer inside them for extended periods of time, the organ was, quote, definitely able to destroy cancerous growth. This is proved by the fact that tumours in all parts of the bodies are disappearing or diminishing. No other remedy in the world would claim such a thing, end quote. Wilhelm began to test people with cancer and schizophrenia in these boxes. However, this didn't last long as one of his subjects heard a rumour that Wilhelm was insane and previously was in a mental hospital, which was false. The subjects then reported Wilhelm to the American Medical Association, and upon them finding out that he was practicing without a license, they shut him down. Wilhelm's reputation took a further hit when journalist Mildred Brady wrote about Wilhelm in a newspaper. The article was called The Strange Case of Wilhelm Reich, the man who blames neurosis and cancer on unsatisfactory sexual activities has been repudiated by only one scientific journal. End quote. Brady had the intention of showing how pseudoscience was false and saw Wilhelm as a necessary target to reach his final goal. With the release of this article, the Food and Drug Association, the FDA, started to investigate Wilhelm. Wilhelm Reich, after losing the ability to test his organ studies on people, and with the FDA breathing down his neck, decided to focus on organ in other aspects of life. In 1951, he claimed to have found another type of energy, similar to organ, which he called deadly organ radiation, which he stated that huge amounts of played a big role in desertification, that is, the process of land becoming dry and desert-like. He created a device which he stated could unblock the organ energy that was stuck in the atmosphere, which would then lower the amount of deadly organ radiation and cause it to rain at the location it was used. This was called the Cloudbuster. 
In design, the Cloud Buster was a few rows of aluminium pipes, 15 feet in length, mounted on a platform that could be moved around and rotated. The pipes were connected to cables that would be inserted into buckets of water. It was claimed to work. In 1953, two farmers in Maine offered to pay Wilhelm if he could make it rain and save their blueberry crops. As there was an ongoing drought at the time, Reich used the cloud buster for an hour and ten minutes, and later that day, it rained and saved the farmer's crop. This was shared to a newspaper by an eyewitness, however, now it is believed that it was actually Wilhelm that reported it working, and the farmers weren't able to be found for questioning. The years after the invention of the cloud buster, Reich seemed to have a slow decline in his mental health. He would call the FDA hoodlums and tools of the fascists. He would mention that he had powerful friends like President Eisenhower, and the US Air Force would routinely fly over his farm of Organon to make sure he was okay and offer protection. He began to hate people around his farm and once chased a couple away with a gun just for looking at a neighbouring plot of land. He demanded that before he would speak to the FDA inspectors, they would have to sit in front of him and read his work. In 1954, the United States attorney began seeking a permanent injunction to stop the shipment of organ accumulators and cloud busters, in addition to banning literature that would promote Wilhelm's work. Wilhelm refused to appear in court, claiming that they had no right to evaluate his work. The injunction went through, and the court ordered all accumulators, parts, and instructions to be destroyed, and several of Wilhelm's books that mentioned organ to be withheld. With no ability to work or experiment on organ, Wilhelm then started to focus on aliens, claiming that he would see UFOs that looked like cigars with windows flying over his farm. They would leave streams of deadly organ radiation, which he believed was them trying to destroy the Earth. He would spend nights with his son, looking through telescopes at the sky above Organon, searching for aliens. When he believed he saw them, Wilhelm and his son would roll out two cloud busters and target the UFOs, claiming to drain the energy from them. He reported that he shot several of them down. Wilhelm would often describe the nights he and his son would look for UFOs as a full-scale interplanetary battle. At this point, his son was about 12 years old. In 1956, he wrote a book called Contact with Space, where he said that there might be a very remote possibility that his own father was from out of space. Later that year, one of Wilhelm's associates sent a part for an accumulator through the mail to an FDA inspector that posed as a customer. As this violated the injunction set out by the court, both the associate and Wilhelm was charged with contempt of court, and once again, Wilhelm refused to appear. They were both arrested and held for two days. Wilhelm then represented himself in court and claimed that it was due to conspiracies that he was banned from sending parts. Agents then appeared at the farm of Organon and with the request of the court had to supervise the destruction of the remaining accumulators. As the FDA were only there to supervise but could not destroy them personally, they made Wilhelm and his son smash the devices to bits. A few months after, the FDA confiscated six tons of Wilhelm's books, papers and journals and burned them in an incinerator. Much like the accumulators, the FDA agents could not destroy them personally and they got Wilhelm to burn them himself. An associate of Wilhelm described it as, quote, I felt like people who, when they are to be executed, are made to dig their own graves first, and then shot and thrown in. We carried box after box of the literature. End quote. Wilhelm was sentenced to two years imprisonment due to violating the injunction. He served eight months of his sentence before being found dead in his cell. It was reported that he died during the night from a sudden heart failure. Which finishes the story that we have been on. I've done a good few videos so far, but this one made me feel different during the writing and the researching. When you read back through the FDA's decisions, it doesn't sit right. I initially felt bad for Wilhelm's son growing up in a home like that, but then I think of the enjoyment he must have got when him and his dad 
would stay up all night fighting aliens, which must have been of great enjoyment for a 12 year old lad, whether or not you believe they actually did. And I think, in a strange way, it created a good deal of bonding between them. The instructions for building a Cloudbuster are still available online and are still used by some chemtrail conspiracists, where they would aim the Cloudbuster at the chemtrails in attempts to draw deadly orgon radiation from them. I really enjoyed this episode, and honestly, I hope you did too. Whether Orgon ever existed, and a mass cover-up occurred, or whether Wilhelm got just a little too sceptical, it was an absolute treat to share this story with you. Thank you if you've got this far. Thank you for watching this episode of Deep Lore. Hopefully, it's left you wanting to view more content. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I would appreciate it if you could share it with your friends. After all, why leave the comfort of the VCR when we're only at the tip of the iceberg? There are still plenty more video cassettes left to watch.